Hey you guys, my name is Danielle. Welcome to Yard Sales and Dreams. You guys, I have a little video here for you today. I found some stuff at a Wednesday yard sale and that usually doesn't happen to me. I might find a Thursday yard sale every once in a while, but not very often. These people were actually setting up for a Thursday yard sale and they had brought their trailer to the side of the road. It literally looked like a trailer full of junk. I'll put the picture up in the screen so that you can check it out for yourself. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would have stopped to even dig through any of the boxes because I have a feeling a lot of people wouldn't have stopped unless they were a hardcore yard seller like me. I like to find things at yard sales and anywhere that I can for cheap and flip them in my eBay store for a profit. And that is exactly what we did on this trip. This box came locked, you guys. I had my total added up to 25 bucks. The lady brings this out of her car. So I ask, how much is the box? And she said, I don't know, I can't get it open. How about five bucks? And I'm like, yes, okay, yes. After I felt it, I was thinking jewelry, money. This moment was so exciting, you guys. I was holding my breath. I had waited all day for my husband to get home from work to share in the excitement of what was in the box and we were freaking out. Oh. <gasps> It's been cut. What is in the box? Lift it up. It says do not cut. <laughs> All right, here we go. <gasps> oh God, it's money. Just stuff. Just stuff? That's a bank. A bank? It's not, it's a diary. So my family had became somewhat deflated because the stacks of cash and the jewels that we had imagined would be in the box was not the reality of what was in the box. But what was in the box was this diary and these letters that corresponded with the diary. And boy, this girl was boy crazy. Let me just tell you that. She was 15 years old and this diary ends up being dated from 1970 so this had basically been like a little time capsule that had been closed for 45 plus years. And so we go through the box. There's a lot of things that get thrown away right away that were just dirty and had been soaked in like the perfume and the makeup that was in the box that had gotten all over some of the things. But I saved all of the love letters that I could and... The little notes and things like that that I could. Some were just pitched out right away. As you can see like that right there. That got pitched out right away. And but like I said some of these letters were really cool. And the girl had definitely an eye for a few boys in her class at the time. So I got to thinking you know maybe this isn't all bad. Maybe I can look this up and see what uh, diaries sell for on eBay. So I was very shocked and surprised to find out when I looked up diaries and eBay how much some of these things had actually sold for in the recent uh, 90 days. So I'm going to be adding some comps in the screen here to let you know exactly how much some of these diaries can sell for. And um, a few of the things in there, like this little vinyl sticker that you see, will be able to be resold as well. There are several of those. Um, the makeup we threw away, it was old and gross and leaky. Uh, this Neutrogena soap here, I just had to mention that. It was like crusty and disgusting. And this little sucker was like disintegrated. I wonder if it was like a full sucker when she put it in the box back in the day. Let's take a look at this $30 haul. And we're going to start with these right here, these read-along books. And we've got Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Anybody who is my age or maybe a little bit more remembers these 45 records that you could put on and you could read along with the story. They were pretty cool. I remember doing that when I was a kid. Now, I don't know if I ever had Star Wars and I definitely did not have this Disney's Black Hole, but that is pretty cute. Pretty neat looking. I'll have to uh, do some more research on that and see what that might be worth. Raiders of the Lost Ark. And again, all of them have the 45 record that you would read along with. Picked up these coming-of-age women's pamphlets uh, for, like, young teenage girls. 
from the 50s and 60s. And you guys, if you watch my channel, you know that I love selling paper stuff. I love selling photos. So these were a must that I had to put in my pile. And this had some really cute hairdos in it. But those um, pamphlets with all that information for young ladies, let me tell you, some of that stuff was really interesting to read. Love all those hairdos. This metal clipboard was really cool. And what it is, it's a pilot's checklist. And you had room inside. It opens up to put papers and information in there. It does have some glue, pretty heavy glue right there. I'll just have to disclose that when I'm listing it. I have seen a couple of these things um, or things that are very similar to it sell on eBay. So I was happy to have that thrown into the pile. Now these were kind of a dud. I bought these because they looked brand new. Um, turns out you can really sell something like this for really good on eBay if it is new in the package um, with it being old. But apparently with them being out of the package like that, they just really aren't worth messing with for me anyway. Um, so also picked up this Fire King little uh, measuring cup here and got that listed i believe already in my store i've had this stuff for a few days and these pyrex have already sold too they're going to new brunswick canada i believe and this pattern is called friendship on the pyrex if you ever see this um chicks or pigeons i don't even know what they are but it has a very very beautiful um design this sticker box is the kind your teachers would have had. And it's from Highlights for Children, it says. I couldn't find a date on it, but I'm guessing that it's going back to late 70s, early 80s. And if you ever had your name on a chart and got a sticker on there for any reason, I'm sure your teacher had a box just like this. Look at those pickle stickers. I don't think my teacher ever had pickle stickers. Those are cool. Just full of new old stock uh, stickers in here. Not complete, as, uh, obviously, some of them have been used, but I'll sell them like that. I'll let them, let whoever know um, that they are, whoa, one just flew off, that they have been used and um, some are missing, but I think that somebody will still really want these stickers here. Oh my gosh, scratch and sniff, I don't think those are gonna work anymore. What do you guys think? I think the sniff's probably gone. At least, um, probably not the sniff that you want because a lot of this stuff smells really mildewy, the paper. And anytime that you ever get anything like that, <clears throat> you can try to set it out and let it air out. Or there's a lot of tips and tricks with trying to air out things like this. Like some people say, um, set, put it in a box with like a cup of baking soda in there. And the baking soda will draw a lot of the smell out of paper. Um, just whoever you listen to depends on what you might learn about getting the odor out of paper. Got this really neat little uh, prism. I don't even know what you call this thing. It's a prism wand, I think is what the box said. Let me see what the box says here. It says it's a prismatic wand. That was close. And what you do, there's a stick that goes in one side and it creates this glitter effect. But I'll show you without the glitter effect, if I can get my camera to um, look inside there. Let's see which end I have to be on. And then I'm gonna look towards the light. You can kind of see in there what it does. Pretty neat, but I have that listed in my eBay store. Also picked up that rocking chair pin cushion. It was brand new in this box, and the box says it's from Japan, so that tells me that it's going back some in age there, at least probably 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. I could not find a uh, date on the box though, but I thought the box was super cool. So I have a couple little things left to show you, and then I'm gonna get to the best stuff at the very end. But this chunky little bracelet, if you guys had one of these and had your name engraved on it back in the day, woo, 
you were happening. I'm telling you. That probably isn't going to sell for anything. That'll probably end up at our 127 sale. And this little Powerball keychain actually hit a little bit of value. And I might sell those together. I've got two of them. The Kentucky Powerball. And I thought that was really neat. So the fact that somebody probably had some kind of uh, weekly ritual of using this to pick their Powerball numbers, you never know what some people might do for the lottery. Uh, picked up this what's called Duber uh, Silverline pocket watch. And of course there's no watch in it, but it's just the shell. I picked it up just in case it was silver and it does have some goo on it there. I don't even know what that is exactly. I don't think it's tarnish. I think it's actually like another substance. Not really sure what that is, but I'll be working on trying to get that off. It does have an engraved um, rose, it looks like, and some other kind of floral pattern on it. And then moving on to this Fabergé watch. I'm pretty sure that this was a very fake Fabergé watch because it's gold tone and I don't think that there's very much value in it. Those diamonds there are not diamonds. And that will probably end up at our 127 sale too. Now the most interesting thing that came out of that was this little baby shark here. Now I'm afraid to list this on eBay. I know I looked and people do sell them for about 20 or $25. Um, but I would be afraid to ship this thing because if you kind of jostle him around a little bit, you see these little flakes happening and I would just be afraid that he would like turn into mush, but it's very weird, very kind of creepy. Um, but that was at that yard sale. And I wanted to show you too, that it was a Florida souvenir and what is, uh, yeah, it's stamped with shark there on the cork. So I saved the best for last, and that was this Tiffany pen and pencil set that came together like this. It had the T right there. And the only thing that hurts this pen, in my opinion, is this engraving, and it says Wadsworth, and it was a company. There, you can see it. Wadsworth Inc., I think it says, or Wadsworth Company. My eyes are not really that great today. Um, but came with this little bag, and then the box. The box is in a little bit uh, rough condition on the corners there from where, I guess from just being stored. Um, but I do have that listed in my eBay store. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to catch you at the next Yard Sales and Dreams video. It's a gorgeous day out here in Kentucky, guys, and I wanted to show you guys my plants. Um, they've been doing really, really well in this heat and the humidity and my gosh have they really taken off um they've got dew on them still this morning because i'm out here early and it's going to be a really hot one today so i just wanted to come out and check on everything this morning see how everything was doing run some rabbits off i still have rabbits eating my beans and i'm trying to deter them so i've got some owls out here i've got three owls and then i've got these owls that like make I don't know, some kind of screeching noise once they see um, a rabbit or anything move. But those things haven't been working very well. Now these plants down here look much better than these up here. So it's funny that the closer that you get to our house, you're getting this, the more rabbits, which is kind of crazy. I would think they would want to stay further away from the house. But yeah, they're eating up here, which is crazy. Down at this end of the garden, we have some zucchini plants that are blooming out. And if anybody knows anything about zucchini plants, anywhere there's a bloom, in about one to two days, you will have a six or eight inch zucchini ready to eat. Um, we make bread with them. We dice them and saute them. That's kind of my favorite way is just to dice them and saute them up a little bit. They're really good with fresh tomatoes, fresh green beans, things like that. I grow peppers too in my garden. Um, I have two peppers up by the tomato plants and then I have some other peppers um, in another location closer to our house. These tomatoes down here are a little bit smaller in size, but I planted those a little bit later. So hopefully 
those tomatoes catch up with these down here pretty soon. And then I've got a few cucumbers here. And then I've actually got some cucumbers that are going up a vine, or up a fence rather. And uh, I'll show you guys those in a minute. But yeah, got some little baby cucumbers on there and I'll probably wait till the end of the day, see how those are looking, maybe pick them tomorrow. So this is our other cucumber location and I've got about eight or nine cucumbers planted along the border of this piece of metal that we've attached pig fence to. We um, did this a couple years ago. We've actually grown green beans up here before, but this is down here um, amongst some asparagus that we have. And I've got right there, if you can see that plant, I've got a spaghetti squash planted there and it looks like I've got a little one coming on. Now, I just kind of let them grow up amongst the uh, asparagus and the, these other um, weeds there. And I left the weeds because it's going to kind of give them something to climb around. And then I also have a tomato plant down here. And it looks like I have a tomato that's turning red. You guys, that's my first one. That's awesome. So that was like a single uh, tomato plant that I put down here with this other stuff. And it looks good, you guys. Can't wait for my first red tomato. Now I'll give that probably uh, maybe another day or two to keep turning and just hope and pray that a turtle or rabbit or something like that doesn't get a hold of it. This is where we grow our jalapenos and we grow them here because we have this little slope going on in the front yard and this catches a lot of water and keeps the ground really moist for these uh, jalapenos. And we always put our ashes in there from the fires that we have. Um, through the winter so we'll put that in the soil just adds uh nutrients back to the soil as you can see i have a little jalapeno there and little blooms throughout what are you doing rango what are you eating huh what do you got so yeah we have that fence up around there because the dogs tend to want to root around in here a lot and uh don't want them rooting around my jalapenos because i'll never get any <laughs> 